let's look at that a little bit more formally. Net force Y equals MAY. So the normal force minus the weight. What should I plug in for the Y acceleration here? Zero. Because we're not moving vertically. We're only moving horizontally. Otherwise, you wouldn't know that the normal force equals the weight. The normal force doesn't always equal the weight. It's only when we have a simple problem like this. So you're right. The normal force will equal the weight. Let's go ahead and calculate that weight. I think we already figured out what that is. What's the weight going to be? No, maybe we didn't do that yet. So let's calculate the weight. What do you get for that? times g. So that would be 5 times 9.8. 5 times 9.8 is 49. So we know that our normal, so mu k here is 0.3, and we know our normal force is 49. So what do we get for the frictional force? Minus 14.7. That's right. Although this formula, I was just trying to figure out the magnitude. So. Oh. And that's actually something that could really mess us up here. Notice it doesn't make sense to put in a negative 14.7 here because we've already figured out the sign for the work, right? We've already decided that the work is going to be negative. If we plug in another negative number for the friction, we're going to end up with a positive um, work over here. So that's why when I wrote down this formula, I was trying to put in these dots to indicate the magnitude of the work just depends on the magnitude of the force. We've already taken care of the sign ourselves. That's one of the most confusing thing, things I think for students to take care of the signs. Okay, so uh, what are we going to plug in here for the frictional force? Minus 14.7. Right. Okay. So we're still just working here on the left-hand side of this equation, trying to figure out the work done by each non-conservative force. So someone was asking earlier, do we need to pay attention to the vertical component here? And now we can see that we do need to pay attention to it. Anytime you need to know what friction is, you need to pay attention to the vertical component because the vertical component gives you the normal force and that gives you the friction. Um, what, what, what were we working on in uh, our approach? I guess we were still working on step five. We were trying to figure out the work done by each of the non-conservative forces. Well, we decided that we don't need to include the weight here because the weight is conservative. We just figured out the work done by friction. That's negative. How about the normal force? What's going to be the work done by the normal force? Should we include a number for that here? No. Yeah, that's right. Even though the normal force is non-conservative, so why, don't we need, why isn't that doing any work? Because it's not in parallel to the motion. Right, because it's perpendicular to the motion. Since we're per normal force is perpendicular to the motion, that's doing zero work. So you have to look at every single force and determine whether it's doing any work. So there's a lot of work to do here. Um, to, uh, to work through this equation. Uh, but now we're finally done here with uh, figuring out the work in step three. So is energy going to be conserved here? Is mechanical energy going to be conserved? Yes. Well, mechanical energy would be conserved if the change in the energy was zero, which it was in the two previous uh, problems that we did. In fact, in this case, is the mechanical energy going to be increasing or decreasing? mechanical energy of this problem is decreasing. That's what this equation tells us, right? It's telling us that the change in the energy will be negative. We're going to be losing energy. Who's taking away the energy? Friction. Now we can see why friction is called a non-conservative force, because friction acts to make energy not conserved. Uh, in, in fact, usually friction will decrease your energy. And it's bleeding away the energy here. So I can't write this. I can't just use this equation that we used on the previous problems because the energy initial will be bigger than the energy final. We're losing mechanical energy. Where's that energy going? What's well, going into what your instructor talked about, thermal energy. The energy doesn't just, just disappear. The mechanical energy here is being changed into the thermal energy. But thermal energy is not included in this equation. So the mechanical energy is decreasing. So if you look at step four, we should be using the left-hand column for step four. The left-hand column is when there, the network is not zero. The network by the non-conservative forces here is not zero, so we just use the left-hand column. We just use this basic equation. All right, and now we have to start plugging into this equation. Well, how can we figure out the change in um, the mechanical energy? Well, we can start by writing that like this. 
And one of these should now be obvious to us. Delta U is zero. Yeah, because we're not changing our vertical height. Remember that potential energy depends only on your vertical height. So this term is going to be zero. A lot of things end up being zero when we're working through this approach. And how can we figure out delta K? What should we plug in for that? delta k, is that k final minus k initial or k initial minus k final? Final minus initial. Good. Well, what should we plug in for k final? Zero. Yet another thing that's going to be zero, because the whole point here is that at the final position we're coming to rest. So again, we really have to watch out for terms that are going to be zero. squared. Well, um, the initial velocity here was 10.8. We figured that out. That was what we were going to be going at at the bottom of this slope. Okay, well, let's uh, work out what that would be. Zero minus one half times five times ten point eight squared is negative two ninety one point six. Oh, let's keep solving that. So then we divide that by negative fourteen point seven, right. and we get nineteen point eight meters. That came out to be positive, and that makes sense because remember here we were just plugging in the distance or the magnitude of the displacement. So that has to come out to be positive. Well, this was, I think, a harder problem than some of the ones that we did before, so we should talk about uh, reviewing the steps here. Uh, okay, so um, again, we used the same approach. We identified initial and final points. We identified all the forces on the object. Why do we have to identify all the forces on the object? Because then for each force, we have to determine whether it's going to give us a number to plug in onto the left-hand side of this equation. We have to ask, is the force non-conservative? And if it's non-conservative, is it doing any work? The weight here was conservative, so that didn't appear. The friction did appear. The normal force is non-conservative, but it's perpendicular to the movement. So we left that out as well. Notice that you can't figure out whether something's doing work unless you write down the velocity vector. That's something that people oftentimes skip. We've got to write down the velocity vector or we can't tell whether something is doing work or not. Um, one thing again to really highlight is the signs. For example, a lot of people here would not have realized that the work done by friction is negative. Remember that it's best not to rely on formulas to get the sign. Just use your common sense. Remember, if the force is in the direction of movement, it's doing positive work. And if the force is opposing movement, it's doing negative work. And of course, if the force is perpendicular to the movement, it's doing zero work. So we can't forget about this sign. Another sign that people would tend to mess up is this one down here, because people get lazy and they don't, they don't write k final minus k initial. They just try plugging in, and then they don't get the right signs. Um, so don't plug in until you've written the general formula. That way you'll figure out whether delta k is going to be positive or negative. If you just skip a step, you might easily have gotten a positive number here, and then your answer wouldn't really make sense. Um, so that's something else to watch out for. Uh, let's see, step six, uh, we're not going to have to deal with today. That's more complicated problems. <laughs>
Um, notice that in step seven, step seven says that you might need to use Newton's second law together with this approach. Well, we really did use Newton's second law, right? We used Newton's second law to find the normal force. It was so easy to find the normal force here, you could kind of do that in your head, but you really were using Newton's second law. And if there were more forces here, you'd have to do that on paper. So oftentimes you have to put Newton's second law together with this conservation of energy. 